Hello everyone and welcome back to this uh, combat camera animation uh, series where we're going to go through and talk about how to make more c combat camera dynamic interesting camera flow whatever we're going to call it um, in the first part we showed you how to use this tool and how to put together a level sequence that is relative to the player's location as well as swap out characters for their different animations so in this part we're going to go through and show you how to tidy up your function to make it more usable and more friendly to use in your actual player character's uh, blueprint. So let's take a look. So last time we were here, we created our character animation to do this effect. Okay, so let's now uh, just a bit tidy up, a bit of uh, home housekeeping to make this a bit more usable and a bit more friendly to use in our projects. So at the moment, we've got our character doing this complicated looking thing uh, with the level sequence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a function that we could use. So I'm going to select all of this and then right click on this and collapse the function. And we'll do this one as uh, play sequence animation. Okay. And what we can do now is go inside of our function here. And we're going to give it some parameters that we can use. So level sequence is a good parameter to use because we could chuck that onto there. And we can then set different types of level sequences and use the same function for many different things. Uh, there are other things you could do as well. So these settings, if you break these open and we have a make, you can see there's lots of little settings you can do. You can also play, loop, blah, 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 blah. So you could do a few things like disable movement input so the player can't move while they're doing it. Um, you could also tell it to hide the hard. You can tell it to hide the player. I don't know why you want to do that, but you could. Uh, you can also disable camera cuts too. So if you don't want the camera to be used, it's in part of the sequence, you can make that part of it too. So let's go ahead and look at doing that. So I can just now drag over a few of these things. I'm going to do uh, disable movement input, make that a parameter. Disable look at input. Um, hide HUD, that might be useful. And we're going to do disable camera cuts as well. Okay, so all these pins are going to go into this settings uh, thing here. And I'm going to just click on hide so I don't get the ones I need. Okay, looking good. Next, we're going to clean this up a little bit over here so it doesn't look all messy. So what I'm going to do here is I'll take the out actor and promote that to a local variable. That'll be a local level sequence. So being local, it means it's only used in this function. And once this function is finished doing its thing, it will remove this variable from memory. So it will go from there to there. Next, I'm going to take this return value, and this will be the sequence player. So that's the, that's the sequence actor. This is the sequence player. So you can promote that to another local variable, local sequence player, and drop that into there. So now we've got these set as two local uh, variables, we can tidy up all this junk. So all these ones are going as out actor, we can just put onto our uh, local level sequence. I'm going to drag that to there and there. And let's put that back up to here. There we go. And then that goes to there, that goes to there. Set binding by tag, be level sequence actor. And I think it's connecting to, yeah, that's fine. We'll just take that off. And then we've got the play, which is the level sequence player. So let's connect that, put that in there. So looking a lot, lot neater without having lines going literally everywhere you want. Like so. Excellent. So we're going to hit compile and save this. So next, I'm going to go back to my event graph. And here we can see our function in all its glory. We can choose a level sequence we want to use. So I'm use the attack sequence. I can disable various things. So I'm going to disable the camera cuts. I can turn it on. And now when I do the attack, it won't do the camera cut thing. Okay. So it depends on like, maybe it's like a, you want it to only be used for like finishers or if it's the last enemy in the map or something like that. You can make it then variable to whether or not the camera's going to cut to this sort of cinematic space like cut of the camera so you can really mess about with that and change that around as much as you like uh likewise you can disable all the inputs hide the hard if you want we haven't got any of that in this example so we can't really show that off too much but because we now made this a separate animation sequence uh function 
We can now use this for different types of sequences and different types of attacks. So we can make this really useful for all over the place. Okay. So rather than having a montage, you now have our sequence animation. So once you've got one set up, then the workflow is pretty much the same to make other animations. So we're going to go back to our, our animation. Uh, we're going to go to our animation map. Dev anim. And we're going to create another sequence. And I'll just duplicate this one. Make life a little bit easier. And it's going to be attack two sequence. Open it up. And this time I'm going to change the animation being used by the character. So this one is not going to be this one. We're going to change this by right clicking on it. Properties. And I don't know what we've got here. Uh, we'll choose this one here. So what's this going to do? Ah, oh, it's another jumping one. Okay, could be quite cool. So this one might be quite good to do like um like a spinning camera around it. As the camera is going to follow their attack a lot, a lot more closer. So go around. Like that. So the thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make it root motion. Although I don't think it has actually got any root motion on it. This one. Let's have a look. Nonetheless, I'm still going to tick the box. Yeah, it's standing on the spot, so I'm not too worried about this. But I'm going to just tick it anyway, just so it's done. And so I'm going to go to my camera track for their transform. And I'm just going to clear these keys. I'm going to set up all new keys for it. Okay. And we'll view this camera. There we are. Okay, so the camera we want to blend over and we want it to track this sort of animation, I think. This would be quite cool to see. So I'm going to follow this arm around. So I'm going to put the camera over here. Uh, oh, I forgot to tick. There you go. Add the key. And then move it around a bit more. Bit more. Uh, what arm was that? That was his right arm, wasn't it? I'm not going to follow the arm entirely all the way around. It might, it might make the player dizzy. But we'll go to here. And it will make it fade out. Yeah, we'll try that. So hit save. And that's all good. Don't have to change any timings here. That's all fine. So now if I go back to my player map to test this out, I'm going to go to my player character. And where I've got debug key one doing this one, I can have debug key two doing attack two. And I hit compile. And I'm going to keep camera cuts on. I'm going to keep camera cuts on this one as well. I can see how that looks. So there's the first one again. And here's the second one. Obviously, I'm not no filmmaker. <laughs> we need to make that a bit better. Um, so let's go back and tidy it up a little bit. Dev anim. And we'll go to attack two sequence. Where are you? Attack two sequence. And go to, back to the camera. So the starting kit frame we'll do over here. Okay, I'm going to go back to our game map. And there's our first one. There's our second one. Yeah, have fun. So there you go. It's a lot, lot nicer uh, to use, a lot easier to use, and a lot more options you can tweak and mess about with there. So feel free to do tweak around with other settings if you want to bring those in. 
to that too. But there you go. Uh, in the next part, we're going to go through and show you how to do this with two characters. So we're going to have like a victim and an attacker and show you how you can swap them both in and out to do some sort of stealth takedown type attacks. You can watch the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you so much for all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.